Welcome to another episode of Cyber Secrets. It takes a couple minutes to boot up, but when it does, it'll be at a username prompt, and the username is going to be root, and the password's Tor, just like the previous others. So T O O R. Let's go to log in. And when it does log in, usually the size is off just a little bit. So even though we see uh, an extra screen on the side, we're going to pop the screen by making it smaller, making it bigger again, and now it resized. That's a good VM trick. What's interesting though is that Kali does have a new screen, kind of like the Windows 8. So it has all of the, uh, the main titles, such as again information, vulnerability scanning, web apps, and uh, you can go and scroll through. Going to go to the second page, and these are some other apps that it has, third page. So it does have more of a tablet view, but still it has the same power as normal. So if you go to applications, Again, it has information gathering, vulnerability analysis, just like it has in the past. And information gathering has all the good stuff, Zen Map, Sparta is actually pretty good, uh, Recon NG for open source intelligence gathering. Again, vulnerability analysis, uh, web testing has good old OWASP Zap, uh, database assessment. So the majority of the tools that you were used to in, uh, again, even Backtrack uh, 5 and uh, Kali version 1, they have brought back in to uh, Kelly 2 and made it a little bit cleaner. But if you are comfortable with Kali, the command line is where most of the power actually is, even though they have pretty icons. Um, but uh, let's go and go through in forensics. These are some of the common ones. But here's where it's a little bit interesting too, is in the user applications area, is where they have a lot of the basic system administration content. Again, you have your good old uh, uh, G-Edit, uh, LeafPad, um, granted, some of the content, like your uh, wireless or SDR, um, is in here as well, but uh, basically it's just something to get used to. Again, if you're comfortable with command line, even better. Now, I know there's some graphical ways to uh, update in Kali, but I like the good old apt-get. Apt-get is extremely powerful. So if you do apt-get update and then apt-get upgrade, it's going to look for any updated software. So what I'm going to do here is uh, this is third-party tool I like to use. It's called Simple Ducky. Simple Ducky can be used with the USB rubber ducky from uh, Hack5, and it also has uh, some other good features. So basically we're going to go and download the installer, then run the installer. And sometimes uh, if it's not an installer just like this, it could even be something like what's called a Pi Bomb, Or you might even have to do a git clone. So what this is doing is it's uh, very similar to a Pi Bomb, Is it's downloading a bunch of uh, dependencies and content. It's also setting up some other um, items for you. So again, just basics going through the basic installer and then when we're done we could simply type in simple ducky and then it runs so again we're waiting for dependencies okay now this is going to take a while so what i'm going to do is fast forward a little bit so the nice thing about kali is it has uh, traditionally been on uh, debian ubuntu uh, uh, variations so when it comes down to it, it does support a lot of the software that's out there on Linux. If you do come across something that is not running well on Kali or tends to break, then you might have to uh, search for the dependencies that are working with that specific application. Once it's updated, hopefully it'll work. Worst case scenario, it may not be supported in uh, this distribution. With that said, um, one thing to be careful of is when you do install certain things, there's a possibility that dependencies that are currently on Kali may not be compatible, and if you update those dependencies, you might be breaking other applications. So, once this is done, we'll go ahead and uh, install Tor. Again, Tor is relatively useful, so when it comes down to it, uh, there, there are certain sites you can only get to through Tor, and it's also nice to be able to have a, a free static IP address if you go to a .onion address. The Cyber Secrets web series covers computer forensics, hacking, and everything in between.
you for your continued support of Cyber Secrets. With the reboot of the different series, we want to ask if you have ideas for future content or suggestions for improvement. Please let us know. Click subscribe for new episodes of Cyber Secrets.